Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about the surface area of prisms. All right, so let's talk about the properties of pyramids. Uh, so we talked before about prisms, now we're going to talk about pyramids. So remember, with a prism, we have two bases that are congruent and parallel. With a pyramid, we just have one base. So we have one base, and that base is going to define the type of pyramid, again, that uh, we have. So only one base. Then we have a lateral edges, which are not parallel. So in the, uh, in the case of the prism, of course, we had lateral edges which were parallel. So only one base, lateral edges which are not parallel. A vertex, which is the intersection of the lateral edges. Uh, lateral faces, which are always triangles. So I have the lateral faces if you take a look. Uh, here I have triangles which are lateral faces. Now in a regular uh, pyramid, we have triangles which are congruent. But if we don't have a regular pyramid, then we have triangles which are not going to be congruent. So it's very easy to compute, compute the uh, lateral surface area, as we'll see, of a regular pyramid. But if we don't have a regular pyramid, then we have to go ahead and construct the lateral surface area of each of the individual triangles to get the entire lateral surface area of the pyramid. So just a note uh, to keep in mind as you think about how to determine the lateral surface area and the total surface area. All right, so again, only one base. Uh, the name of the base uh, determines the uh, name of the pyramid. Lateral edges, which are not parallel. A vertex, which is the intersection of the lateral edges. Uh, lateral faces, which are always triangles, but sometimes not congruent. Uh, and then again, the regular pyramid has a regular polygon as its base. All right, pyramid parts. So we talked about uh, the lateral edge. Uh, then also we have to talk about a couple more items. We have an altitude. The altitude goes from the vertex to the base of the uh, pyramid, and it intersects at a right angle with the base at the foot uh, of the base. We also have a slant height. The slant height goes from the vertex and is perpendicular to one of the base edges. And then we have, again, the altitude, altitude from the vertex to the base. So slant height is the distance from the vertex to the base edge. Altitude is the distance from the vertex to the base. And let's just identi identify this point here as the vertex. The foot is the intersection of the altitude and the base. And the lateral edge is the edge of the lateral face. All right, so when you were going to figure out the pyramid area, there are two different areas we consider. One is the lateral surface area, or LSA or LA, and the total surface area uh, TSA or just TA. The lateral surface area is going to be the area of the lateral faces and the total surface area is going to be the uh, lateral surface area plus the area of just one base now. And recall it's different than the prism because in a prism we had two bases. All right, so we're going to consider a regular uh, pyramid. In this case it's going to be a regular square pyramid. So what we're going to do first is we're going to figure out the lateral area. And so what I've done is I've constructed a slant height from the vertex to one of the bases. I know that that's really the altitude of this triangle, which is the face of uh, the pyramid. And what has happened is I've split the base into two congruent segments, so three and three. And I'm given that the uh, lateral edge length is five and the base length is six. So now I have a three. The altitude is going to be a four, so it's a three, four, five triangle. So this red length is going to be 4. Uh, and then 5 is really my hypotenuse, which is just the lateral edge of the pyramid. So the lateral area is going to be 4 times, because I have 4 uh, congruent triangles, 1 half base time site. So it's going to be uh, 4 times 1 half, which is 2, times the base edge, which is 6, times the height, uh, which is the slant height in this case, which is going to be 4. So I get 2 times 6, which is 12, times 4, or 48 square units for my lateral surface area. Now, in order to find the total surface area, I'm going to have to find the area of the base. And that's pretty easy in this case. I have a regular square pyramid, so my base is just going to be 6 times 6, or 36 square units. Now, when we get into uh, regular pyramids, uh, like a hexagon or a pentagon, 
and finding the base area becomes a little bit more complicated. But in this case, we'll go with something easy. I've got a square base, so it's, uh, 36 square units. So now my total surface area is going to be 36 square units plus the lateral surface area, which is 48 square units, and that gives us 84 square units for the total surface area of this square pyramid. All right, so let's take into consideration another problem, and let's see if you can work it out on your own. A pyramid has a square base uh, and equilateral triangles as faces. Uh, if the base edges are eight centimeters long and the lateral edges are eight centimeters long, find the total surface area of the pyramid. Okay, so I'm gonna let you stew on this one for a minute and then we'll go through the answers. All right, here we go. Let's find the lateral surface area first. So what I've done, I have a, um, a, a lateral edge that's eight. I have the base edges that are eight as well. And now I need to figure out what the slant height is. Well, I can see again that I've constructed a 30, 60, 90 triangle because as I draw my slant height, which is really the altitude for one of the faces, I break out the uh, base edge into two congruent segments, so four and four. My lateral edge is eight, so again, I see that I have, which is actually the hypotenuse, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. So here's my 30, uh, 60 degree angle. Uh, this is my 30 degree angle. So I can figure out the slant height is going to be 4 root 3. It's the side opposite the 60 degree angle. So remember, we have to recall uh, content that we've learned from prior chapters in order to solve these problems. In this case, I'm using what I know about 30, 60, 90 triangles to figure out what the slant height is. And that's the area of one of the faces. So I have now the lateral area is four times uh, the area of each of these congruent triangles. So four times one half base times the height, or uh, two, four times one half is two, times eight, which is the base, times the altitude, which is four root three, which is my slant height, which leaves me with 64 root three units squared. Now, simply I need to add the base area to the lateral area to get the total. My base area is 64 units squared. So my total surface area is 64 root three plus 64 units squared. Okay, last kind of fun problem before we finish up uh, with, and I'm giving you the answers, uh, before we uh, finish up and move on to more practice problems. And I'm gonna let you stew on this one as well for a bit. Uh, so I want you to consider a regular pyramid. Uh, if B equals the length of one side of the square, that's the square pyramid, A equals the altitude, and S equals the slant height, what is the probability that one of these sets of values could be the values of A, B, and S? So we're going to determine whether each set is a viable possibility, then provide a value of the number of viable possibilities over the number of possibilities. So again, why don't you figure this out, take a moment, you can pause the video and then come back and we'll review the answers in just a second. Okay, so let's talk about each of the different possibilities. All right, so in this case I have, in the first case I have a base edge length of six, um, I have an altitude of four, and I have a, a slant height of five. So what do I get in this case? Well, if I draw a line here from the foot to the uh, slant height intersection or the altitude intersection with the base, I can see that this triangle here is going to work. I have a three, four, five triangle. So this particular set of possibilities works for a triangle um, or for the pyramid. In this case, if I draw my uh, distance from the foot again to the intersection of the base and the slant height, I have 10, which is half of 20. I have 10, 10, 10 root two. So I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This one works, that's number three, that works. And then if I draw for number two, I draw a distance from the foot to the slant height. I have 12 units, again, it's half of 24. I have a five, 12, 13 triangle. That works as well. So I have one, two, and three all work just fine. Okay, moving on. 
I have uh, four as my edge length, seven and a half as my altitude, 17 is my slant height. If I draw a distance here, again, from the foot to the uh, base edge, uh, I have two, two, seven and a half, and 17. This is not gonna work out, because remember, the sum of any two lengths of a triangle need to be greater than the third, so number four will not work out. Uh, then I go to number five. I have eight, 17, and 15. Now this would work out uh, with the exception that I have an, a leg length that's shorter than the hypotenuse. So this is not going to work out for five. And then finally I have uh, a length here of three and a half. I have three and a half, 12, and 12.5. Uh, this is a possibility for a triangle, so number six is going to work out just fine as well. All right, so if we go back to our original slide, we see that uh, one does work, two does work, three works, four and five don't work, and six works. So out of the six possibilities, we have four that works. So uh, the possibility or the probability that one of these sets of values could work is going to be two over three. All right, that's it for surface area of prisms in a lesson. Come and join us for some practice problems on the surface area of uh, pyramids in the next edition of Otten Math.